we opened up uh, the doors to our church about two years ago. Um, since then, we have enjoyed uh, a multicultural, multilingual, and multi-generational congregation. And in the last two years, we have baptized over 67 people um, and, uh, and brought them into the family of Christ. Milwaukee doesn't need another church. It, it needs movement of hope. Uh, we have a team of people, we call them hope dealers, and we basically hit the streets and we do splash events to uh, let people know uh, about Jesus and we serve them, we, we, we bring something to serve them, whether it's food or any type of goods that we, um, that we can bring that they need. Um, we try to provide for a community that's very, um, that's very poor. Milwaukee is one of the most hardest cities to actually plant a church uh, because of how segregated it is and how difficult it is to uh, bring different people groups together. Um, our church started in a nightclub, uh, Mango's Bar and Grill on the south side of Milwaukee, um, mainly because we just didn't have money to <laughs> meet anywhere else, you know. Um, we uh, used the space that was free to us, um, and we didn't know how it was going to work, but we, we believed that we were going to be an audacious church. Um, and try things that no one is trying in order to reach people no one is reaching. And so we started at Mango's Bar and Grill and um, they would have their, you know, parties at night and in the morning we would have a cleaning crew and set up crew and we would go in and we would use the DJ stage to uh, do our, you know, basically as our, as our worship team stage and where we preached. And then we would use the VIP area for the kids' ministry. And until this day, we name our kids' ministry VIP Kids. And I knew that it was working, that if two or three gather in the name of Jesus, he would be present. When we were baptizing people right in front of the liquor store, right next to Mango's Bar and Grill. People would have to go around us to go into the liquor store <laughs> while we were baptizing people. It was an incredible sight. Then after mangoes, we had to move. Uh, we grew, outgrew the space, and we ended up at a warehouse in the city, of, also in the south side of Milwaukee. And I knew that something that God was doing something because uh, in August, this warehouse was literally a sauna, you know, and there were over a hundred people worshiping in this warehouse um, and um, and they didn't really care they just wanted to be in community with one another and because we didn't really have the finances to find a, a, another place we ended up uh, uh, using a United Methodist Church in the area uh, which took us out of what we what our niche is so to speak which is you know redeem places that aren't necessarily church church spaces and now we're just sort of focusing on how can we take this space and make it ours and um, take it from 1950s and put it into the 21st century context and what I'm the most excited about is just seeing so many people really enjoy uh, a, a new expression of Methodism you know we have services that are both Spanish English that um, we have we, we have something called salsa worship, where we, we get a salsa band and we worship, you know, with Latin music. We use social media very heavily um, because uh, that's where most of our people are. We, our church is mainly of 20s and 30s. We have uh, the first generation type of Hispanic church. They, they're not necessarily speaking to the second and third generation they're not speaking their language and then we have the other choice which is the Anglo type of churches that may have a Hispanic ministry they're not really honoring their heritage and you know where they come from and you know and I said well maybe I need to be here in the middle where I'm not um, so far to 
the right or the left. Another thing that I think a lot of church miss is the ability to speak a different language other than Spanish and English, and that's actually pop culture language. Uh, young people in general, I believe that that's the language they speak right now. Uh, we have to find, the church has to find creative ways to redeem that language. And once you do that, then you got their attention. Uh, Milwaukee is, is um, it's very religious actually. <laughs> um, and so we have very Pentecostal people and very Catholic people. Um, of course, I believe that the Methodist, Methodism is almost like a, a middle ground to those things. We had all these people that didn't care about those type of churches. And they were curious as to why and how a church would start, you know, at a bar and grill. So they came in out of curiosity. And many of those that came in out of curiosity came to, came to uh, realization that something special was happening inside this bar. I guess people kind of understand that we may be different when we're really not. You know, we're, we're, st we're still United Methodists. It's just that we express it differently. The thought was that we are in Milwaukee where mainline denominations basically are tanking. They're not doing very well. We had to basically brand the church without the necessarily United Methodist Church moniker or sign so people can give the United Methodist Church a, a chance. That's what we did. We called it Urban Poema, which urban, obviously we're, we're in an urban area, and Poema because uh, it's out of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that we're God's masterpiece, and so the word masterpiece means Poema. Uh, but when people go into our church, then they start seeing you know, little branding things that le le leads them to believe we are part of the United Methodist Church. Like the logo is Urban Poema Church, but under the logo, we try to, to uh, as much as we can, put uh, a United Methodist congregation. Um, the only place that uh, that it has it is inside the church and on our website, because people, when they go, when they actually do go on on a website, they go for research purposes. The familiar aspect of the uh, United Methodist Church would be more in the sacraments. We uh, obviously we use the the um, the United Methodist hypno uh, um, um, services, you know, like the services of communion, the services of um, baptism. Our worship is very young people oriented, so it's high impact. We have a worship band. We use media. Uh, TVs and um, projectors. Um, we have an app that we revert to. We ask people to download it during the service. In that app, they can give their offerings. They can uh, sign, you know, basically sign up for any life groups that we may have, um, which that's covenant group, which is, you know, Methodist way of, we just say life, life groups, but it's covenant groups. So we, we act as Methodists. We don't hide that. It's just that we don't you know, overtly say United Methodists. We're not doing church for United Methodism's sake. We're you doing church to you know, bring people to know Jesus and um, to make disciples for the transformation of the world. The church has given me life, um, has given me purpose, and has opened doors for me to do the ministry that I'm doing. While I, I can say wholeheartedly that I am not the same person, um, I, you know, I get a little emotional talking about it, um, how, how God has, has um, dealt with my life, you know. Um, sorry. <laughs> Be, being able to see God in, in the lives of people um, has been incredible. God um, helping people through drug addictions and 
through failed marriages, through so many um, things that are, um, to me, are, are miraculous in scope. My hopes and dreams is that we make the, the that when we move into this new uh, church building that we make that a headquarters, so to speak. That we don't make it a church, but a headquarters. What I mean by that is the uh, standing place. Um, so I, I am hoping that um, we would be a, a church plant that plants churches. You know, this is what I believe I was uh, called to do. Our reach can be f greater and further. Um, and that it would be uh, all about this generation, this coming generation. Um, because believe it or not, this coming generation is some of the most um, passionate uh, people, um, young people that I've ever come in contact with.